Hello, I'm Agatha Thrash, and I uh, live at Uchi Pines and have worked here for the last uh, 40 years. And this is my son, Calvin Thrash, who has also lived here for the same length of time I have, 40 years. We came here as the first family at Uchi Pines and have worked here as volunteers ever since. And one of the things that we uh, treat here at Uchi Pines is viral infections. And we like doing that because they respond very well to our treatments. We would like to talk a little bit about the uh, flu and especially uh, the H1N1 and uh, how it uh, differs from other types of flu and what we would do to um, uh, treat the uh, H1N1 if someone here got this type of flu. Uh, perhaps a little history of the flu from 1918-1919 might be of interest to you. Uh, at that time, it was a very distressing type of uh, uh, pandemic. The entire world was involved with this. Uh, millions and millions of people died in that uh, flu. Now, it started off rather mildly with uh, not people, not very many people very sick. And then as it went into its second year, it began to gather some momentum and some virulence, and it became one of the worst pandemics ever. And uh, so many people were extremely sick, and of course it brought a great distress, not only in a family, but also in the whole community, because sometimes there were more deaths than the funeral facilities in a community could care for. And uh, families had to bury their own dead, and sometimes there were people who had to wait in line for a funeral for many days. And so, of course, with that kind of history, we are very eager to prevent that kind of thing again. We had working with us here at UT Pines in the early days a uh, hydrotherapist named Luella Daub. Mrs. Daub had gone through the 1918-1919 flu, and she had a Battle Creek Treatment Center in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, treated a lot of people with the flu there at the time that uh, the pandemic was uh, raging everywhere. She told me that she never lost a case if the person could still stand when they came to see her. And of course, people would get so that they couldn't stand. They were too weak, too debilitated to even stand. But if they could stand up when they, when they came, when they brought the patient to her, she did not lose a case. And how did she treat them? With hydrotherapy. And I'll tell you more about that uh, in a bit. But I'd like to mention also our current uh, pandemic of uh, H1N1. And at this time, we're having, a, uh, having such an epidemic, but uh, it appears to be mild. Again, we do not know if this is the uh, total complexion of this virus or whether it will gain speed as the one did the Spanish flu in 1918, 1919. And uh, we have been watching this very carefully and we've tried to get as much information as we can. And uh, Calvin and I have talked a good bit about this. And what are your impressions about uh, the swine flu today? And it, what do you think about it? It is. I think uh, we can be thankful in a lot of ways yes. that this uh, virus has not gotten to be uh, so strong. But our uh, initial um, impressions are that perhaps it could work out to be something that is, is uh, very serious. Mm -hmm. As you know, of course, the uh, CDC and, and the World Health Organization have declared that uh, it is a pandemic, and so it's something we should take seriously. But right at the moment, um, you're more likely to be struck by lightning, it seems like, than to die from the, uh, the swine flu. Certainly, one thing that we should take note of is that you really are much more likely to die from um, some kind of complication from uh, a painkiller, like what they call the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, drugs, uh, you're much more likely to die from that. In fact, four times more likely to die from that than you are from swine flu. Precisely. And we have known for a long time, 
almost since Tylenol first came out, that if you, if a child, if you give your child Tylenol when they are absent from school with, a, with some kind of virus, that they're much more likely to get a complication from the virus that they have. And their absenteeism is much longer uh, with, with Tylenol than if they just do nothing at all. Yep. And of course, if you do some hydrotherapy and some give them some sunshine and some other things, right. you have a much greater likelihood of uh, shortening the period of time and lessening the quality of the uh, complications that you get from both the virus as well as uh, the medicine that you may have given. Interesting that you'd bring that up too because uh, uh, something that I was just reading today was saying that um, if a person has been actually exposed to a flu, and of course they were thinking specifically about the H1N1 flu uh, virus, but if a person has been exposed to that virus and has, their immune system has, has kicked into gear and they've fought it off themselves, they are then uh, less likely to come down with some kind of variant, a mutant of, of that than if they had taken a vaccine. Yeah, and yes. so if the H1N1 does mutate, which of course all of these viruses sooner or later do, which mm -hmm. is the reason we still have the flu around, um, then if you've taken the vaccine, the vaccine is kind of targeted to that one one uh, strain, mm -hmm. but if you had come into contact with it and your immune system had just through the uh, having a, a, a high immune response, so you were able to fight it off, uh, you stand a better chance at one of these mutant variants uh, that mm -hmm. come along fighting that off mm -hmm. than, uh, than you would if you had just taken the vaccine mm -hmm. by itself. Yeah. Now, tell me about uh, the H1N1 uh, information that you've been getting on the internet. Uh, what do you think of there, that? Is it good and all good or some well, good? It, it, there's quite a bit out there, of course, and it does seem like the, uh, the news has died down a little bit. It's not the number one item on the nightly news anymore, it seems like. Uh, but the mm -hmm. problem that we're running into, it seems like, with information about the swine flu is that it's now kind of gotten into the political arena. Mm -hmm. And so we have to weigh it. We have to we have to take a lot of things with a grain of salt yes. um, because uh, there are vested interests here that people have. Uh, when you stop and think about this, if you have an order for um, hundreds, if not, if not thousands of doses of anything, mm -hmm. then and, and each one of those doses has to be produced, well mm -hmm. then pretty soon you get a lot of money wrapped up in all of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that kind of clouds the issue just a little bit. Yes. Uh, so we, we try to uh, rely on, on the um, news that doesn't necessarily uh, have uh, something mm -hmm. that they might have to prove mm -hmm. or sell in mm -hmm. the background. Uh, and that's more difficult with this particular thing. One of the things that does seem to stick out is that there, the, the, the pandemic, as they have now labeled it, is, is quite uh, quite mild mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like the the response to it mm -hmm. has been more vigorous perhaps mm -hmm. than, it than it warrants. It was justified by the right. by this, uh, virulence of the I, Exactly. Disease. So mm -hmm. I, I think that if we could uh, if we could convey to the public uh, the importance of trying to keep their immune system healthy, mm -hmm. then we would ward off not just H1N1, but oh, yes. many other things as well. And so oh, yeah. here's where uh, the, the approach is so different mm -hmm. when it comes to preventing the disease than it does mm -hmm. with trying to treat it once you've got it. Yes. And uh, so we, we do treat it naturally, it's true, mm -hmm. but the whole idea is to try to prevent the thing mm -hmm. before you come into contact. And of course it's been emphasized to wash your hands yes. and to cough into your elbow. Right. And uh, those things are all, all good. All those yeah, good manners. Yes, those are good, yeah. but uh, then these uh, things that are laws of health we need to recognize that those are things that keep your immune system high. Now, I promised a little earlier that I would tell you how we uh, did the uh, treatments back in the 1918-1919 flu.